Hi, let's practice naming alkenes. So I want to go over the rules one more time with you. First, you're going to find the longest chain that contains the carbons in that double bond. Okay, so the longest chain with the multiple bonds. Next, you're going to number the chain to give the lowest number to the double bond, to that multiple bond. Uh, after that, you're going to number and name the substituents. So those are written first, and then you simply write that long chain that contains the multiple bond. That's going to be the parent chain. That would be like the backbone. A couple of little reminders for you. You'll recall that we put dashes in between numbers and the letters. We put a comma just between numbers. Use Greek prefixes if we have multiples. So for example, if we have two alkenes, you call it a diene, two of those, um, of those alkenes. And then we always are looking for alphabetical order and numeric order. Uh, let's see, I had a thought of what I wanted to tell you with this. On the Greek prefixes, again, that's going to be for the ending E-N-E. -E. If you have two alkenes, remember the ending is E-N-E. -E. Um, and it's also if we have multiple substituents, like two methyl groups would be uh, dimethyl. Okay. Uh, let's look at six examples that I hear, have here for you, and I hope that these answer your questions. So let's look at this one. First thing that I want to do is find that longest parent chain that includes the multiple bond, the alkene. Uh, so I find my double bond, there it is, and let's count longest chain. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We'll get the same answer. I like to go straight chain, so let's count um, across. So this is going to be our number one carbon, two, three, and four. We always include the double bond, the alkene, in our parent chain, and we always give it the lowest numbers possible. Uh, so my substituent, this methyl group, ends up being on the third carbon. Let's name it. So here's my substituent, three methyl, put the dash in between the numbers and the letters, and the double bond is on the first carbon. You always write down the carbon that touches the double bond first. So that's carbon one. One, and I had one, two, three, four in my longest parent chain. So it's butte, there's a double bond, so you end with ene, E-N-E. -E. Three methyl, one butene. Let's keep going. So look at this one. So I see a triple bond. Oh, do you know what? Well, we'll do the triple bond, that's great. I have my triple bond. Actually, we'll make that a double bond, you guys. Let's make that a double bond, sorry. Okay, so here's my double bond, and we'll have a little hydrogen right here. And a hydrogen right there. Great, sorry about that. All I want to practice alkenes right now. Okay, so there's my double bond. I want to find the longest chain that includes that double bond, and we want to give the smallest numbers to that double bond. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Great, let's go ahead and look at the straight six carbons. So we're going to have one, two, uh, it looks like this double bond is going to first touch the second carbon, three, four. This is going to be an ethyl group, eth means two. I put YL at the end, I don't say ethane, I say ethyl because it's a substituent, is attached to that parent chain four, five, and six. So we will have our substituents first, so let's number those, four, ethyl, and then I say where that double bond is, two, hexene, two, hexene. Let me put that down here for you, nice. So that tells the reader that the double bond is very first touching the second carbon, nice. Okay, let's look at this one right here. Oh, I have two double bonds. So we want to give these the smallest numbers possible. I have just one long chain. I don't have any substituents branching, branching off of it. So let's count both ways. We could go one, two, three, four. So that would give us a one and a three or one, two, three, four. Oh, it's going to be the same like a palindrome. It's going to be the same either way. I'm going to go ahead and number it one, two, three, Four. And in this situation, it didn't matter. Um, so we are going to have our very uh, first carbons that touch the double bond are the one carbon and the three carbon. 
So 1 comma 3, remember we use commas to separate numbers. 1 comma 3 dash butte, so I had 1, 2, 3, 4, there's my 4, butte, and then I had two double bond bonds, so it's going to be diene, butadiene is how we say that. 1, 3, butadiene, and we put the A in between the T and the D just to make it easier to say, to pronounce. Okay, let's look at number four. I did some skeletal structures for you on this. Uh, I see two double bonds. All right, we wanna give these the smallest numbers possible. This would be my first carbon. So I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that parent chain is going to have six carbons in it. It has two double bonds. So I know it's going to be a, a diene, two double bonds, diene. Um, I do have a methyl group right here that's on the fifth carbon. So let's do 5-methyl, there's my methyl group, and then on the 1-carbon and the 4-carbon, those are the first carbons to touch the double bonds, 1-4-hexa, 6 carbons in my parent chain, hexadiene, the 2 double bonds. Nice, you're doing great. Okay, let's look at some cyclical compounds. Now remember, we always give the chain um, we always give the numbering so the multiple bond, that double bond, has the fewest, the lowest number, okay? So that means you're going to start numbering where that double bond is. So I have one, two, three, four, five carbons, and I'm going to have this be my one. Um, I chose that to be my one because it also gives the smallest number to the methyl group. Uh, so we have one methyl, there's my substituent. It's cyclical, remember we have to put that word cyclo, and then five carbons in the chain in that cyclical compound. So pent, I've got a double bond, ene, pentene. Now notice I didn't have to do one pentene or, or a cyclo one pentene or one cycle pentene. It's understood that we always count from the very first carbon in that double bond. So that was understood, that's understood. When it says one methyl, it's like, oh, that's touching where the double bond is. Uh, let's look at this one right here. So I see two substituents and a double bond. We're going to give the double bond the smallest number as well as our substituents. So we can start numbering here one, and then go um, one, two, three. Or if I start up here, I'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to give us the smallest numbers for both the double bond and the substituent. If we start one, two, and three, one, two, three. So we're always going to start with that double bond and then we figure out do we go clockwise or counterclockwise to give the substituents the smallest numbers. So in this case, I started right down here, one, and then we went counterclockwise. Uh, so we've got a one, three, dimethyl, I have two methyl groups, uh, cyclo, this is a cyclical compound, six carbons, hex, there's a double bond, ene. And again, I did not have to say one cyclohexene or cyclo one hexene. It's understood we always start at the carbon that's touching the double bond. So again, one, three dimethyl cyclohexene. Nice, I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, you can also watch the practice on alkynes, the triple bonds. Okay, thanks for being here, bye.